Hey, good morning. It's Bridget, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Attempting to do an audio this morning. I'm literally just waking up. I am going to head into work today, and I woke up early enough to be able to do a meditation, so I feel pretty chill and mellow. I've actually been up for probably about 45 minutes, so I'm just getting out up from bed, (laughs) from a lying down position. Some of you can relate to this. Well, depending upon when you're listening to Sunday Morning Coffee. So today's talk topic is chameleon. Chameleon. So when I think of the word chameleon, I actually think about Boy George. Do you guys remember the song? Come a, come a, come a, come a, come a chameleon. You come and go. You come and go, right? Well, that wasn't the inspiration <laughs> for this for this podcast, but what actually is inspiration is this concept of realizing that how often we change, we adjust, we adapt our personality, what we want to say, and who we are based upon who we're with. Most of us, most of you, because you're watching or listening to my Sunday morning coffee podcast, you have this skill down pat. You are an empath. You feel and sense energy. And whether you realize it or not, that is a psychic intuitive gift. That is a skill that you have honed and used all your life. Again, whether you realize it or not, you have that. And so you're scanning the room, you're scanning people, you're looking for ways to connect. And that is natural. It's nature. It's natural. And the thing is, though, is that when you do that, sometimes we are such overachievers as empaths. We are such overachievers intuiting what people need or want or expect from us. And we can blame it on our brains and our past experiences and the way we were trained in our homes growing up, but or in the first initial relationships we've had, training us in such a way that we want to know what other people expect of us so that then we can meet those expectations and not just meet them, but perhaps exceed them and be the best person they've ever met or ever seen or ever been with. Do you see? There's this constant mm, push to be the best or to be great or to be good. And in order to, and why? I don't know that we're conscious of that, but why it is really to receive love, to be loved, to seek approval, which approval for many is a form of love. Recognition is a form of love. Being liked is a form of love. And So we have learned, all of us have adapted, have changed ourselves and learned to meet the needs of others and to anticipate even the needs of others. Meet them even before they ask by picking up on their energy cues, by sensing them. Also by looking at things like their nonverbals, the way they're acting, how they're moving, what they say, but it's not even what they say, it's how they say it. And the repetitive things that people say, we pick up on that and we get it. And we take all this information in and then we pull out the color of the chameleon that we need to be in order to blend in, to be accepted by this person, to be in connection with this person. We try to find that familiarity or that common ground. We try to give them something that is of comfort for them. And that is for us to respond in a way that they can recognize that feels familiar that feels comfortable for them. And so we bounce that energy back to them. But in doing so, there are moments where we adjust ourselves and our own thinking in the moment, our own value, our own belief about something. We tweak it. We tweak tweak it in order to not set off the other person, in order to not make waves, in order to not cause a, a, a conversation where it's, especially early on, like where it's going to disrupt them or upset them 
or with somebody that you've known for a really long time, like maybe your parent or that brother that has that certain maybe political view, for example. I'm lucky I don't have that. So, hey, Adam, if you're listening, I'm not talking about you, bro. (laughs) But you know it's true. We do it. So we adapt, we change, we become a chameleon. And I recently was um, in a group and working on some spiritual concepts and feeling into the deeper waters of myself and my own remembrance of who I am. And in doing this like meditation type work and this deep healing work, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm such a chameleon. I literally change for every person around me. I change at the cafe. When the boss is there, I'm different. I'm totally different because she makes me so nervous. Oh my gosh. She makes me like lose my freaking mind. Like I can't remember anything. She's like super direct and kind of intense, but very successful. And so I totally respect her, you know, but she scares me. So there's that. (laughs) And also, too, in relationship, like, I've recognized that over the past 15 years of the marriage I've been in, that I have adapted and adjusted. Um, But it's not, I want to, I want to be really clear to meet the needs of other people. Also, I want to be clear, it's not that people necessarily are asking us to do this. In fact, people are not asking us to change ourselves to meet their needs. We think that that's what people want. And this is why we have a culture where people are now craving vulnerability and authenticity, where people are real and willing to just be themselves. This is why, because we have been just anticipating that we need to change for others, but we don't need to do that. We have to stop doing that. We have to break the cycle of that. So I recognize that one of the values I've had for many years and I don't know that it's a value even it's just a it might have been it might have come from like a need for survival or a need to just feel calm or peacefulness inside myself maybe because of anxiety I'm not sure why exactly maybe because of my upbringing my childhood I you know living in a a home where there's a lot of unpredictability and that kind of thing Emotionally, maybe, I don't know, but there's this, there has been this unmet place in me where I've needed to feel comfort, wanted to be taken care of or had someone like just do little things for me that make my life so easy, you know, and I have known for a while, I'd say probably five years maybe, that that's the case, maybe even seven years, eight years. I mean, about halfway into my marriage, I think I realized that I chose a partner who was very nurturing, very steady, very calm, very mellow, to give me a sense of a source of comfort. And so because I wanted to sustain that that kind of core base feeling, I adapted and adjusted over time to trying to blend in or match that energy. And so chameleon-like blending in. And so over time, I just kind of fell into that, that state of being, which now feels like a state of almost paralysis in a way. I mean, that's a harsh word, but almost like um, being blessed with such a buffer. Now, I literally feel like it's almost as though I grew so dependent on someone else unintentionally. Like I didn't realize that was happening. And I think many people have this experience, but I never changed who I was at my core. Like there was always an underlying restlessness and unsettledness, a desire to to go travel, to go be with lots of different kinds of people and to go to events and be social and meet new friends and eat at different restaurants and have different experiences. There's always been that. And I've done that. 
And that has happened for me um, to some degree. But then when I come back into what my life is, to my home base, it's completely dramatically different than that. And then I have to adjust and adapt. So the part of me that's chameleon-like, just like for you, may have shown up in the home where I'm coming back in and having to adapt and shift gears and go into more of a, okay, now this is my role. I'm the mom. Okay, I'm going to make dinner. Okay, let's schedule those those appointments or whatever it might be. And or oh I have to I have to work on my business, you know, that kind of thing cuz I do. I have been also during this entire time also <laughs> tending to my business. And there's also this recognition too that like the chameleon part of us is also the part that's out in public, in social settings. So meeting new people, we are we really changing ourselves or are we seeking to bring out the best parts of ourselves or the parts that we feel are most compatible with that group? That may very well be the case. It's not necessarily that we are manipulating energy, but we are bringing our best self, right? And that's normal, I think, when you're in groups and whether you're going to a social event at the theater or you're going to a party at your kid's school for a fundraiser or you're going to work, a meeting at work, a board meeting at your nonprofit, wherever. We adjust and adapt and we bring the parts of us that are most fit in alignment with those places and spaces. In a way that is chameleon-like, we are adapting, we are blending in. But it's not to say that we sacrifice ourselves in those moments. I think the, the the core point here is that to recognize when you are actually holding yourself back, when you are intentionally not sharing to your fullest extent where you could. You actually feel it in your body. I can actually feel it inside myself. Like I feel the other person reacting or responding a certain way and then I pull back into myself which means I don't share I stay in that zone in that mode where it is acceptable to them where they will receive me and in a level of acceptance and it won't create stress it won't create stress or I won't get backlash I won't and I've recognized that I've spent a lot of time in my life chameleon like to avoid backlash, to avoid somebody coming at me with an intensive emotion because I already walk through the world as an empath extraordinarily sensory. I don't just feel in my heart space. And just like you, you don't just feel in your heart space either. Chances are you're feeling in your body because now for me, I've shifted into my body in the last two years. My body has been such a barometer And now that my body is so aware and feels all of the stuff that my heart is feeling, it is like unbelievable. Like my ability to sense and feel energy and intuit energy and to be psychic with my body, oh my gosh, it's off the charts. And you may be feeling like this too because astrologically things have changed and shifted. We as a community, as a society, as a human kind, as a whole has completely been going through an overhaul, a massive shedding and a healing and a clearing and a release. And that is from the COVID. That is from a collective trauma we are healing. And because of that, we are moving into a more heightened awareness. And some people might call it hypervigilance, you know, a survival mode, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. If you're in psychology, you're going to a therapist. And yet, yet, this energetic piece of us, this chameleon-like ability that we have is a skill that is great. It is handy. It is useful. And yet, it is something that we have to start to recognize is the opportunity to see how are we using that skill? How are we being ourselves or not being ourselves? And you might make a conscious effort to not be yourself someplace in some environment because it's safer. I get that. Listen to your body then. When you're pulling back, it's for a reason. 
But when you start to feel that pullback of yourself, of your essence, feel into the why. Why is this happening right now? Why am I feeling like this right now? Am I afraid of their response? Am I anticipating their strong feelings coming at me? Am I trying to avoid that? Am I trying to avoid a conflict or a confrontation or even just a simple disagreement or argument? But because my body is so in tune and so heightened in its intuitiveness and its awareness and its sensitivity and its knowing, I might not be able to deal with that. And so I am making a choice to not go there. And if you make the choice to then, nope, this is who I am. I'm going to drop the veils. I'm going to drop the falsehoods in this relationship and this, whether it's with like your best friend and you just haven't quite, you're, you're always the one that listens and you never like express, or you've had an issue with some stuff, there was some way that they're talking to you about something And you have just a different feeling. It's not about confronting anybody. It's just about being yourself. It's about saying what you feel. It's not a choose one side. You both can feel two different things. You can disagree and it can be just fine. Adults do that. That's what happens. I know we've forgotten. I know we have forgotten this. That adults can have total differences of opinions and views on things and still completely be friends. You can have a conversation about it if you want. But you can be friends. You don't have to just hold back what you feel. If they're like spouting off something and you feel something different, you don't have to hold back. That's the chameleon in you. You are blending in because you don't want to make waves. My friends, my empathic, sweet, intuitive, body intuitive friends, you are already in the waters, okay? You are already floating on the waves right now. (laughs) Like you are already in that. And you have a surfboard, you're going to be fine. Or a big pool floaty. You know what I'm saying? You are okay. We have got to. Now, you know, I'm trying to do this too. Stop holding back. It doesn't mean you go at somebody. It's, I'm not talking about the intensity of, oh my God, this is what I feel about. I'm not talking about that. Because the way that you communicate, the way you express, the way you share your views and your values, the way you do it, the energy in which you're sharing from, the authenticity. Not from anger, which oftentimes is like, people are very passionate and sometimes that can be, it's so close, passion and anger, oh my gosh, you can misinterpret those energies, right? It's not about you, it's not personal. So the way that you share, just remember the way that you share, from it's about you. This is me, this is how I feel. This isn't about you. I'm not telling you how you need to feel. This is about me, how I feel. It makes all the difference in the world. So too, then, as you receive, as you receive the information, your chameleon doesn't have to blend into the background and wish you were, like, could just disappear. And you don't have to stop listening to the person either. You can recognize that when you are in the dialogue, when you are in the exchange, that you are a compassionate observer, you are holding that space for your friend to release, to share their opinions, to just get it all out. They might be venting like a chimney, let them. Or they might have very strong views that you do not agree with. Let them. You don't have to take it personally. That's how you receive, right? Recognize that when you're receiving, first step into the, be the observer Everything isn't about you. I know it's shocking to believe that because we're not taught that way. We're taught as we walk through the world, everything's about us. Everything's a reflection of what I'm doing and what I'm saying to the world that I'm getting back, what I'm I'm reflecting out there, what I'm putting out there, all this stuff, right? We've been taught that. You get what you, you reap what you sow, right? Careful what you ask for, you know, that kind of thing, right? We've been taught that. That's in our mind, right? When the truth is, it's not about you. Believe it or not, everything is not about you, but you are about you. You have to be about you. So as this chameleon, you have the beautiful ability to adapt and adjust and to blend into your environment, but don't do it to hide and don't do it to 
hold back yourself because you're afraid that if you share what you really feel and think, that you're not going to be loved, but that you won't be liked. Do you see that fear? Do you feel that? You feel me. Right? There's so many pieces to this, I know, but I really wanted to talk to you about it because it's been coming up for me. And again, I want to be really clear. It's nobody else's fault. How you choose to react, how you react to something, you take something personally when it's not personal, or you share something, you like redirect. Like people do this all the time, right? With anger. You're mad about something totally different, something that happened at work, so you take it on your 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 partner or you take it on, on the clerk at the grocery store, et cetera. Do you know what I mean? Or in the car. You know, we always redirect, it seems like, right? Especially at those of you, my friends, who are processors, delayed processors. It takes you while to process stuff. And then once you process something, then all of a sudden, oh, I need to release this emotion or energy. Well, then that experience happened three hours ago or two days ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just be really aware and be aware of how you are expressing like the way that you are sharing i mean that's your because you're 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 it's energy that's coming out so come from a place of authenticity and recognition that it's about you not about them and you can even say that hey this is i just need to vent this is about me i'm gonna just spout off a bunch of stuff for a little bit or or hey if you have to have a deeper conversation with the person because they're sharing something that you really just have a totally different view on, you want to, and you say that, hey, I have a completely different view on this, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. This is where I'm at. We don't have to agree. We can disagree. We don't have to agree, but I'm going to share my, how I feel. This is how I feel. I'm not trying to change your mind. You're not changing my mind. It's not like that. This is how I feel. You know, we don't have to be like super aggressive about how we feel and other people don't have to understand us in order for them to love us or to care about us or to be kind to each other. It's about how we express and share ourselves. It's not about not sharing or expressing ourselves. Okay. All right. This has been Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Thanks so much for listening, my chameleons, my empaths, my body intuitives. Nice to feel into you today. I hope this has inspired your spirit and filled you with hope. Remember, this is your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching Above Life Channel on YouTube.